The valve clearance is the first thing to check when adjusting an engine. If the valve clearance is not adjusted properly, then adjusting for example, the ignition, or the carburetor, will do little good. In this video, we will show you how to adjust the valve clearance. You have to check that with every inspection. But first, we'll explain what valve clearance is. To explain this, we will take a drawing from a workshop manual. On the left you see the rocker arm, with the adjustment screw and adjustment nut. On the right is the valve spring with the valve stem in the middle. Valve clearance is the gap between the adjustment screw and the valve stem. You can adjust this gap, or clearance, by turning the adjustment screw. If you want to know more about the importance of correct valve clearance, please refer to issue 4 of our technical magazine. We are using our just overhauled AS1600 VW Type 1 engine. To adjust the valve clearance, you need to remove the two valve covers. You can do this with a large screwdriver. We had this engine test run, so there will still be a lot of engine oil in the cylinder heads. Use a cloth to protect the heat exchangers, and a catch basin under the cylinder head to collect the engine oil. Adjustment is done when a cylinder is in its top dead center, at the end of the compression stroke, ready to ignite the fuel mixture. At that exact moment, both valves of this cylinder are closed, and you can adjust the valve clearance. If you want to know more about this, watch videos 6, 7 and 8 of our engine overhaul series. Here we show how the position of the rotor indicates which cylinder is in top dead center compression, ready to ignite. On the right, are cylinders 1 and 2. On the left, cylinders 3 and 4. When you turn the crankshaft pulley in the opposite direction from the normal operating direction, cylinders 1, 2, 3, and 4 will each take turns in the correct position for valve clearance adjustment. Cylinder 1, cylinder 2, cylinder 3, cylinder 4, and then again cylinder 1. Note, the rotor will not be in the same position for cylinder 1 on every type of engine. The notch in the distributor housing will indicate what the rotor position is for cylinder 1. But we will come back to that in a moment. Remove the distributor cap by loosening the two clamp brackets. Turn the crankshaft pulley until the rotor points toward the notch. If the compression is very high and turning the crank pulley is difficult, you can remove the spark plugs. Without spark plugs, the compression will disappear. The copper contact of the rotor now points in the direction of the notch. Cylinder 1 is now in top dead center, ready to ignite. The notch on the crankshaft pulley will confirm this. The notch of the top dead center will line up with both crankcase halves. Cylinder 1 is on the right hand side, closest to the flywheel. With the crankshaft pulley in the correct position for cylinder 1, the intake valve, shown here on the left, and the exhaust valve should have clearance. You can measure this with a feeler gauge. Our AS1600 engine needs 0.15 mm of valve clearance for both the intake and exhaust. Pull both rocker arms of cylinder 1 away from the valve stem. Slide the feeler gauge between the rocker adjustment screw and the valve stem. The feeler gauge should be able to slide between them with some resistance. If so, you may proceed with cylinder 2. In this case, we have a little too much clearance on both valves. To adjust the valve clearance, you will need to loosen the adjusting nut on both rocker arms.
loosen both adjusting screws to verify that the adjusting nuts are running properly. If they are not, it will make the adjustment impossible. Want to know more about this? Then watch video 2 of our series on engine diagnostics. Slide the appropriate feeler gauge between the rocker adjustment screw and the valve stem of the intake valve. In this case, it is a feeler gauge with thickness 0.15 mm. While the feeler gauge is between the adjustment screw and the valve stem, tighten the adjustment screw until a slight tension is felt. Slide the feeler gauge back and forth while tightening the adjustment screw. When the feeler gauge can still be moved, with a slight friction felt, you can tighten the adjusting nut. The trick now is to tighten the adjustment nut without the adjustment screw moving. Hold the adjustment screw in place with a screwdriver. With the adjusting nut tightened, feel again with the feeler gauge if there is any resistance. If there is no resistance at all, the adjustment screw may have been twisted while tightening the adjustment nut. Then start again until you have reached the correct setting. Now do the same for the exhaust valve. The nut should be tightened properly, but don't over tighten it or you could stretch the adjustment screw and damage it beyond repair. We'll talk about this in the second video in the series on engine diagnostics. If it does not work from the first time, just start over. Adjusting the valve clearance takes feeling and experience. After a while, it will become second nature. To make sure the valve clearance is not too large, use a larger feeler gauge. For our engine, which needs a valve clearance of 0.15 mm, we use a feeler gauge of 0.20 mm. It should not be able to slide between the adjustment bolt and the valve stem. Are you satisfied with the adjustment of the valves of cylinder 1? Then you may proceed with cylinder 2. To position cylinder 2 in its top dead center, at the end of the compression stroke, ready to ignite, you will need to turn the crankshaft pulley, counterclockwise, until the rotor is turned a quarter turn. The crankshaft pulley will then have turned half a revolution. We have marked the crankshaft pulley there with a yellow paint dot. The rotor is now turned a quarter turn counterclockwise. We repeat the operations to adjust the valve clearance, but now for cylinder 2. Loosen the adjusting nuts. We unscrew the adjusting screws. We now use a special tool. This is a socket wrench and screwdriver combination. This tool simplifies the operation, providing the correct screwdriver and a 13mm socket wrench with a strong handle. We now adjust the valve clearance for both valves of cylinder 2. The procedure is the same for all cylinders. On the other side are cylinders 3 and 4. On the flywheel side is cylinder 3. Turn the crankshaft pulley counterclockwise until the rotor is turned another quarter turn.
The notches on the crankshaft pulley should now be in line with both crankcase halves again. You can now adjust the valve clearance of the valves of cylinder 3. It is very important that you use the right screwdriver, so as not to damage the adjustment screw. Do not use an open wrench, but a fully closed ring wrench of 13 mm, so as not to damage the adjusting nut unnecessarily. To check the adjustment, we previously used a 0.20 mm feeler gauge. You can also work more accurately and use a combination of 0.15 and 0.02 mm. If 0.17 mm cannot be slid between the valve stem and the adjustment screw, then the clearance is certainly not too big. Then you can adjust the valves of cylinder 4. To do this, turn the rotor again a quarter counterclockwise by turning the crankshaft pulley. The yellow mark on the crank pulley is visible again and is in line with both crankcase halves. You can now adjust the valve clearance of the valves of cylinder 4. Now that all valves are adjusted, you may reassemble the distributor cap. Make sure that the cam of the distributor cap is positioned correctly. Also install both valve covers. While adjusting the valve clearance, we recommend checking that the adjustment screws are properly positioned against the valve stems. We explained the importance of this in video 14 of our engine overhaul series. The adjustment, or shimming, of the rocker arms is explained in video 2 of this series. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments under each video on our YouTube channel. See you soon.